Welcome back to the channel, Crypto Trend Trader with a quick update on Bitcoin. Before we get started, I'd like to remind you it's not financial advice. I'm not your financial advisor. These markets are extremely volatile, so please do your own research and trade responsibly. Alright, so we confirmed our uptrend back here. Confirmed our downtrend right here on the daily. Uh, the four hour switches based on moving average crosses are in red and blue here. And then this is the daily crosses in uh, green and purple. Um, so we have basically, um, I got a couple fibs on here, but there's also some key trend lines. Um, we were obviously in this tightening range, ascending, finally got the breakout, started our distribution pattern. Uh, that sell-off literally came down exactly to like the purple line that we had drawn on here already, um, the bottom of our broadening wedge. Uh, which is essentially just a distribution pattern and then finally we found some support um, bulls came in and uh, you know we basically got this dead cat bounce um, I did take a position out of here uh, there's just so much confluence I had to obviously um, we had previously formed this support right here before the break to the upside and that extended out was coming into line with our broadening wedge which was coming into line with the 786 of just this move up here the previous move from like 8200 all the way up to 106 so that was the 786 right here and then that was also the 382 of our larger move um, which is the retracement of the 14,000 range so from 14,000 all the way down to like 6400 we made it back up to the 618 um, initially on the first push up and then we came down to the 0.5 found support didn't make it back to the 618 actually we got the bounce back to the 618 rejected then 0.5 then didn't make it back to the 618 then we got the massive dump and we found support at the 382 so we basically there was just so much confluence right here um, not to take a position now where we're at now is we're at the green 382 so the green 382 is the entire move up here. So the bull trend that we were just in, the bull rally we were just in. So that's our green one. That's going to act as resistance now. But essentially, we bounced right before the 0.5 back to the 382. So if this gets rejected here, I would expect it to blast down to the 0.5. And then that would line up at the 886, and then we could potentially get our move back up. I don't necessarily think that this has to be now like the big push back up. You know, I definitely don't think it's going to be a reversal out of this area. Uh, but, you know, I don't necessarily think we're going to make it all the way back up to the channel now and retest the breakdown point. Um, that was a very bearish move. Um, so, you know, you don't want to get overly ambitious on this situation as we're essentially like switching back to like our bearish view here. Um, and it's important that, you know, we keep all this in mind and what time frame we're looking at and, you know, what time frame we're looking at trading in. Uh, so that we don't get confused by all these switches back and forth and that's why it's important to have like whatever you're using to distinguish whether it's moving averages or you know Heikinachi or you know whatever your strategy is to determine an uptrend or a downtrend you know higher highs higher lows whatever it is so essentially we came down here to a key fib level I would expect a bounce but what we need to pay attention to is how high the bounce comes back up are we going to make it all the way back up to this 0.5, the breakdown point in orange right here at 9400? I don't know. We have to see that, you know, but that's a key level to be watching because if we broke back above that, we'd be back in this this triangle, um, you know, and I would consider that to potentially be a spring and then we can move to the upside. But I don't necessarily think that's going to be the case. But at some point in time, typically the market will like, uh, like to come back up here and retest a breakdown point now again though We have to be very careful in this situation because there is so much volatility like across all markets I mean there's massive moves like on the daily in everything from like traditional markets stocks to like gold and silver um, You know to obviously like crypto markets. There was like 20% move in the last couple of days So I mean you have to be very careful in these assets right now and be responsible um, you know with your positions, don't just uh, you know close your eyes and you know pray. Uh, we have to be very responsible here and just protect our capital, and then you know use it to grow over time and take the smart trades, you know, and let them pay off as opposed to just jumping into random positions, you know, because we think they look good or because they're down a certain percent or whatever. Because there's a lot of people that bought coins or 
you know, stocks or whatever because they were down 5% or 10% or whatever and just got absolutely wrecked. You can't just go buy random stuff. You have to look at, you know, whatever your proven method is and back test it over time and then use that to make your decisions, not just like your emotions. Because I'm not going to lie, after this massive dump and continuation and everything, it was hard to buy in this area because it looked like it was just going to pour down forever and it was starting to look like it was going to come down to here too. But there was just so much confluence not only with the diagonal lines but with the fib levels as well and I had already targeted this area out I just had no idea it was going to get down here that quick so but that's why it's important to identify these areas ahead of time so that when all of a sudden these massive moves do happen you're not scrambling to you know do some technical analysis and make your decision um, uh, so there we have it. I do expect us to get some sort of continuation and back test of some of this breakdown areas. Um, I don't know if we're going to make it up very high, though. We'll see. I mean, I think at this point in time, we've basically confirmed to the market that any retracement of this wave here um, it, in blue from 8200, any retracement of that is now like a bearish retracement. So if we got down to the 786 or the 886, we're out of the golden retrace zone, so we're more likely essentially going to retrace further. So at this point in time, I think the key levels to watch are like the green and the orange fibs uh, as opposed to the blue because we've essentially taken out the blue. I think they'll still be relevant, but you know we basically have told the market that more likely than not, we are going to come down past this previous swing at uh, 8200. So I think realistically, we need to pay attention to like the green right now and the orange. So if the green, if we make it down to the 0 0.5, that's going to put us at 8,500. Um, and we could potentially still get the golden retrace from that area. But if we made it all the way down to the 618, that would put us at like 8,000, 79, 89. So that would put us at 8,000. You know, we could come down here, potentially still stay inside the broadening wedge. We would probably get like some kind of bounce here and then a massive sell-off and then a nice bounce back up test the top of the range, test some of these key fibs, and then let the market make up its mind as to where we're headed from there. Um, but it's important to focus on the smaller moves inside of this area because even though we're on a four hour chart, I mean, and you can get one big candle, it's important to know like where the market is going to potentially like stop or reverse. And that's what these fib levels are essentially doing is identifying potential areas where like, you know, other people are going to see confluence and say, okay, this thing is sold off a certain percentage uh, of this previous move so it's looking like a good value I'm gonna go ahead and take a stab at it with a percentage of my trading account and uh, you know see where it goes from there and more often than not if you don't find success at say the 382 you might take a stab at uh, you know the 0.5 after that um, etc so but uh, we're not gonna get into a bunch of strategy here uh, at this point in time I do think that we're gonna see you know some kind of continuation here our positions already up a few percent um, so that's great and everything, but you do want to be responsible, move your stop loss up and make sure that, you know, you're essentially taking profits or not turning a winning trade into a loser. Um, cause I would always rather just take a few percent and just put them in the bank, log those profits, um, rather than, you know, potentially turn that into a losing trade or just get stopped out at break even cause I got greedy. Uh, there's always going to be another trade. And at this point in time, it does look likely that we're going to get some kind of continuation to the upside cause we are all the way at the bottom of both of these ranges that we have plotted out here. Uh, but we don't know because like I said, anything could happen. There's so much volatility in these markets right now. Um, you know, you gotta be very responsible. If you have a huddle position or whatever, that's fine, but if you're in a trading position and you're using a leverage position, you need to have stop losses in place and you need to, you know, take trades based on like risk reward and proper, you know, position sizing and key fib levels, uh, whatever, whatever moving averages that you're using, you need to use those responsibly in this situation and not just jump into trades because you're getting emotional. Uh, and if you did take a loss on any of this situation or maybe you took a, you know, massive win, don't just give it back to the market, you know, because you just did great or because you're emotional because you just lost a bunch of your money just be responsible take time and you know don't turn one mistake into another mistake or one winner into uh you know a big winner into a big loser or a break-even trade you know log those profits take time relax enjoy yourself enjoy your trading and your lifestyle i mean this is fun we're all in this because we enjoy it we're all you know into crypto and technical analysis and all these assets but really what it's all about is just building wealth you know, but if you can't do it in a way that's like both healthy and enjoyable, you know, I mean, granted, it is for a lot of people a job. So, 
you're not going to love every minute of it. But essentially, you know, if you if you don't enjoy what you're doing, you know, you're in the wrong space. So I know that you guys are here because you enjoy yourself and you enjoy crypto and, uh, you know, trading. And you're here to learn and share your knowledge with me uh, as well as, you know, absorb some of mine. But in the end, you know, it's all about making money. I mean, that's why I do this. That's why we all do this. You know, we all have our goals, whatever they are. You know, for some people, they just want to double their account one time. Some people want to make their losses back. Some people want a 10x, 100x. Some people just want to make a million bucks. Some people want enough to retire. Uh, whatever it is, everybody has their separate goals. But, you know, it's important to have different sets of goals along the way so you can basically check those boxes off. So, you know, for a lot of people in this space, I think it's important to, you know, say set your target at, you know, one Bitcoin. You want to get your first Bitcoin. After you get your first Bitcoin, two, then five, then 10, then 21, you know, 100, whatever your target is. You just keep moving towards it. So, and you may not even want to have one old Bitcoin. Maybe your, you know, maybe your priority is somewhere else. Maybe you love Ethereum, um, you know, and you want to run a node. So you want to get 32 Ethereum. What, whatever the situation is, you know, that's fine. Just set those goals for yourself and make them attainable along the way. So you know you can check off that box and feel good about what you're doing. It's not just like zero or a hundred and there's no in between. So, well, there you have it, guys. I'm looking for a little continuation to the upside, but we're going to continue to uh, step our stop losses up and take profits along the way uh, because we don't know where this, uh, you know, dead cat bounce is going to end. But at this point in time, it looks like, uh, you know, it's not going to be a bullish retracement of this final uh, wave right here. And it is looking more likely that we're going to be retracing this entire structure. And although we did touch the beginning of the golden zone, it's more likely that we're going to come down to the 0.5 um, in green here. Uh, all the way or at least uh, you know or potentially the 618 but we are inside the golden retrace zone now so at any point in time we could potentially reverse to the upside but again you know with all the volatility in markets and everything please just be responsible and it's a lot easier to make money than it is to make back the money that you lost so remember that crypto trend trader and I'm out of here